When watching the recent premiere of Feud, Betty and Joan, I was immediately struck by the show's opening title sequence. It's a look that's at the same time both simple and complex in its style. It made me sit up and pay attention. But why is it so effective? What makes it stand out amongst other boring, cumbersome television intros that most people just skip over? In this video essay, I'm going to explore the facets that make up an effective title sequence by examining the work of a man who reshaped the art of the title sequence single-handedly. Saul Bass. Now, if you don't know his name, that's alright, because you've definitely seen his work. Saul Bass started his career as a graphic designer, known for his seemingly simple, minimalist, eye-catching corporate logos. He started dabbling in print advertisements for motion pictures in the 1940s until 1954, when legendary filmmaker Otto Preminger commissioned Bass to do the advertisements for his film, Carmen Jones. Preminger was so impressed with Bass's work that he also had him work on the film's opening title sequence, his first foray into filmmaking. But it was 1955 when Saul Bass exploded onto the scene in Preminger's next film, The Man with the Golden Arm. The effective and striking image of the crooked arm seemed to summarize the tone and feel of the film perfectly. Here's what Bass said in reference to the sequence. The film was about drug addiction. The symbol, the arm, in its jagged form, expressed the disjointed, jarring existence of the drug addict. To the extent that it was an accurate and telling synthesis of the film in the ad campaign, those same qualities came with it into the theater, and with the addition of motion and sound, it really came alive and set up the mood and texture of the film. Saul Bass was one of the first to realize the creative potential for title sequences. Up until that point, they were simple cards or flip pages with names. It was a dump of information that was so disconnected from the narrative of the film that the audience would use the time to go to the bathroom or buy popcorn. They could be skipped because they didn't add anything to the film. But Bass saw an opportunity to enhance the audience's experience by contributing to the film's themes and overall tone. His methods and mindset helped revolutionize the way title sequences were utilized in motion pictures. And his legacy is still apparent today, but not only in films, you can see his contribution in the current golden age landscape of television. So what exactly are his methods and mindset regarding title sequences? First, advertise the product. At their most basic function, the title sequence must communicate the title and the credits of their particular program. Similar to a poster, they are an advertisement meant to sell the product by hooking in the customer, or in this case, the audience. And with any product, the name and major draws must be apparent. In Bass's work, he was able to effectively combine striking images with clear typography to create something evocative. When watching a new television show for the first time, the effectiveness of the show's title sequence is paramount. Sometimes it's the first thing we see as an audience. It needs to grab their attention and hook them in. You only get one shot at a good first impression, and this introduction can determine whether an audience will want to continue on the journey or not. Clarity is an important factor. Compare and contrast the images in the title sequences for season one and season two of True Detective. Ignore the quality of their respective storylines and just focus on the images. With season one, we can clearly see our protagonists and glimpses into the world. But with season two, the images are muddier and unclear. The audience has to struggle in order to understand what they're seeing. It just doesn't resonate the same way. I remember watching this introduction for the first time and being extremely disappointed in comparison to the first season. For me, it was already a notch against the second season and the storyline hadn't even begun. That's why making a good first impression is so important. Second, set the tone. The title sequence can also serve as the story by preparing the audience for what's soon to follow, once the narrative actually begins. Bass wanted the audience to be active participants from the very first moment of the film, and so he would use the title sequences to symbolize, summarize, and establish the mood or attitude of the story. Here's what Bass said in reference to this very idea. My initial thoughts about what a title can do was to set mood and the prime underlying core of the film's story, to express the story in some metaphorical way so that when the film actually began, viewers would already have an emotional resonance with it. Think of this notion like an athlete before a game. They don't just arrive at the arena and run onto the field ready to play. There's a process they go through of warming up and getting their mind right before the game begins. It's a process of conditioning that's all part of the larger sport. And in a similar way, the title sequences of a film or TV show condition the audience and prepare their minds for the journey ahead. It's the same reason we turn the lights off before a horror story. It's about setting the proper mood. And Bass could do that with any genre. 
For example, in John Frankenheimer's Seconds, Saul Bass was able to convey the scary concept of tampering with age and humanity by breaking apart and distorting a human face, which symbolically set the stage for what was to follow. When watching and listening to the titles of The Walking Dead and The X-Files, I can't help but see Bass's influence. The now iconic scores on top of their images perfectly sets the mood for their unique worlds. Saul Bass knew that the title sequences should establish the tone and set the mood that launches us into the story. But he quickly realized that they could also serve as a prequel to the story itself. At one point, it occurred to me that the title could make a more significant contribution to the storytelling process. It could act as a prologue. It could deal with the time before. For instance, in Big Country, I tried to establish the notion of an island of people in a sea of land, the vastness of which is penetrated by a stagecoach. After an endless journey, it reaches this isolated group of people, and only then does the story begin. Not only can the title set the mood, but they can also give the audience information vital to the story. They can establish the world, characters, and storylines. Think about the titles for Game of Thrones. We are shown the known world, focusing in on the locations for that particular episode, while also communicating the progressive rise and fall of each house as it plays out on the mechanical game board. And to a lesser extent, The Wire also gives information to the audience by showing us shots catered to that particular season's setting, such as the docks in Season 2, the school in Season 4, and the newspaper office in Season 5. Third, work of art. Lastly, the title sequences should stand on their own as an individual work of art. The titles aren't just information or popcorn time. They should demand the audience's attention. If you didn't know anything about a particular show, you should still have a clear idea of what you're journeying into by the titles alone. It was said of Saul Bass that you could simply walk out of the theater after watching one of his title sequences because you as the audience knew exactly what the story was about. The titles can tell their own stories, with a beginning, middle, and end, or they can be as simple as a striking image. Whatever it is, it must stand out. It must be unique and engaging. Think about it. What are your favorite title sequences? Is there one you refuse to skip over when watching the show? Can you watch it on YouTube by itself without watching the rest of the program? Can you sing the theme song? Can you recall any striking images? If so, that's successful advertising. And Saul Bass knew that better than anyone, which is why his legacy still lives on today.